here on Auditory Precision, what I'm going to go over is an audiogram, how IHS likes to do it, and a little bit about uh, how you want to make the patient comfortable in the booth. So the first thing is that if I have the patient in the booth, it's because I already got a thorough history on them. And one of the things that I need to know is if one ear is worse than the other, because I'm always going to start with the better ear. If the patient does not know which ear is better, I will start with the right one. I'll be utilizing inserts for this. Uh, inserts, I don't need to mask as often because of the large uh, gap. And that um, it's also something that will give me better test retest reliability. And if anybody has prolapse canals, I can do a lot better with inserts. Hopefully I can show you on myself how this should be inserted. I like the smaller ones because... I want to make sure that it's all the way into the canal and so when it expands the only thing that I'm basically seeing is the black part I don't see a lot of the foam tip and now I know that I have a, a good seal to get an accurate test what I'm going to do is um, util utilizing the older audiometer here I really like these no matter what you're utilizing, you'll find these uh, parts that I'm about to talk about uh, on your equipment. But I'm first going to make sure that my hearing aid simulator is off. I'm going to make sure that my output is on phone. And I'm going to make sure that my input is on tone. And now, when I hit talk forward, because the inserts have been placed into the patient's ear, they're going to hear me. I can change my volume to make sure it's comfortable for the patient and I'm going to make sure that then when they talk to me I'm hearing their microphone or that their button is enabled. I'm going to let them know that I'm going to start with their right ear because they were unaware of what ear was better so I'm going to do the right ear and I'm going to let them know to uh, say yes every time they hear the tone. And because I'm going to try to catch it as quiet possible, even if they think they hear it, I want them to say yes, because I can always double check my work. I'm going to start at 1,000, no matter what, I'm going to start at 1,000. And I'm going to start at 40 decibels. What I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize pulse, not warble. Warble can kind of deviate off the frequency chosen. Um, pulse is something that is more of a pure tone and because it's it's pulsed it will constantly remind the patient that they are getting a stimulus so they can say yes as soon as they hear it. I am now going to present my stimulus. If they do not hear it I'm going to go up five decibels play my stimulus. If they do not hear it I'm going to go up five decibels place my stimulus. I'm going to always go up five. This way I don't ever injure the patient with a loud sound. And if I press my stimulus and they hear it, I'm going to go down 10. If I press it and they hear it, I'm going to go down 10. If I press it, they don't hear it, I'm going to go up five. Down 10, up five is the rule. What I'm going to also do is that I'm going to do all octaves and inter-octaves because it gives me better test-retest reliability. You don't have to do inter-octaves unless there is a gap of 20 between octaves. However, IHS also says that you shouldn't cut corners, uh, and it is uh, a lot better for the fitting of the patient. So starting at 1,000, I'm going to go to 1.5, 2,000, 3,000, utilizing the same technique until I reach 8,000. I'm going to come back to 1,000 and always double check my work, making sure that this was correct. I will now move down. 750, 500, and 250. I will now let the patient know that they're doing a great job. I'm going to uh, converse with the patient to make sure that they're doing okay in the booth. It's not too hot. Do you need me to open the door? Um, before I let them know that I'm now going to move to their left ear. Left ear, all of my settings should be the same as the right. I'm going to start at 1000 like always, and again start at 40. I'm going to use my up 5, down 10 method to find my threshold. After I find that, I'm going to move up to 8,000, double check 1,000, again do that one, and then move down. Now, 
what I'm going to do here is kind of show you something that we might see that's pretty common. And so as I'm doing this, I will stop to always plot my scores to make sure that I don't forget anything. I always want to let the patient know that they're doing good. And what I'm going to do here is show you something that is somewhat common uh, when we are seeing a patient. And here we go. What you're seeing here is that because my left and right never deviate 15 to 20 decibels, there's no debate of whether it's an asymmetrical hearing loss. This is a symmetrical hearing loss. This is a gradual sloping hearing loss, very common with presbycusis. And um, I don't need to mask because I do not have a gap of 70, which is what you would need for air. And so I'm going to move on to bone because I might have to mask for speech if there's a gap of 60, even though that seems almost impossible with your readings like this. If your better bone score and your worse air gives you a gap of 60 or 70, you're going to have to mask for speech or air. So you never want to do bone last. Coming back with the patient, I'm going to let them know through my talk forward that I'm going to add an apparatus um, that we're going to uh, do a bone conduction study. And what I'm going to do is go into the booth I'm going to make sure that it is on my mastoid process if it is not positioned correctly. Sometimes your readings will be worse than they really are. I also want to make sure that they're not wearing glasses because the vibration will also hinder your scores. Once I come out, I'll make sure that they're comfortable. Uh, if they are not comfortable, I'll let them know that it is a quick test. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my input on tone, but I'm gonna change my output to bone. I will do the right ear first, starting again at 1000. I'm gonna start my decibels either at my air score if it was lower than 40, or start at 40 and start going up. You'll see here my audiometer is calibrated for at 70. I cannot move any farther to get uh, a correct calibrated reading for bone, and therefore if it is at 70, which it shouldn't be in this case because your bone should never be less than air, I would have to say that I'm getting no response. But I want to make sure that my bone is basically following my air scores. IHS has you testing 1,000, 2,000, and 4,000. You can double check 1,000 and then do 500 and 250. Also know that when masking is necessary, we're adding 10 decibels to the non-test ear and then following the plateau method. If you have to mask for bone, you'll be doing the same thing, but also adding the occlusion effect, which I have in another video. I will then go ahead and let the patient know that they're doing fantastic, that I'm just going to switch sides, and I'm going to go ahead and go back into the booth. What I want to show you is that when I get my readings here, I've now done the right, and um, when I've done the right, I've realized that here I have a gap of 15. I have a 15 decibel gap between my right air score and my right bone score, meaning I have to mask for this. So before I go ahead and change the oscillator to the left side, I'm going to place narrow band noise into the left ear. I am going to uh, go ahead and take the non-test ear, which is at 50, add 10, which is 60, and then do the plateau method um, until I find effective masking. And then I'm gonna make sure that this is accurate. If it is, my symbol needs to change, and in this case, the symbol changed and stayed where it was. But you might notice that they do a little bit worse once you start to mask uh, the ear. <clears throat> so now that I have done everything on the right ear appropriately, I'm now going to go ahead to the left. I will do the same thing. After my bone is completed, 
I'm going to go ahead and start with speech. And I will go to talk forward. I'll let the patient know that we can take the apparatus off from the bone conduction and that we will start with speech. And from this point forward, I can go ahead and take it off tone, go to mic, make sure it's on phone and not bone. And now I'm turning my mics on by hitting the reverse button, which is how to do it here on this machine. I'm going to get my SRT, my MCL and UCL in that order. What I like to do is talk to the patient uh, at somewhat of a comfortable level before I start my test, usually somewhere around 50 decibels. And I like to let them know that what we're gonna be doing here is um, finding something that is going to be able to help us, um, especially when the hearing aids are able to utilize an automatic gain control. I wanna see how quiet I can get before you can't understand me. And with automatic gain control, what can be helpful is that if you're talking with a loved one and they turn their back and they start to walk out of the room, it can be frustrating that you caught half of it and you really don't want them to repeat themselves. That with automatic gain control, we can start to increase some volume as they walk away. The other thing that I want to let them know is with the UCL, with compression and automatic gain control, I can make sure that if somebody drops a dish and something becomes very loud, that we can go ahead and protect the ear. This is a great way to get the patient excited uh, about a hearing aid uh, while they're still in the booth. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the PTA of my right ear by adding up 50, 1,000, and 2,000, adding that up and dividing by three. My PTA would bring me to be somewhere around 40, so that's where I'm going to start my SRT. My SRT should be within 10 decibels of my PTA. If it is not, I have to redo my air scores. So let's say that I did my SRT and it was perfect. Right at 40, I presented my spondy words. They can hear me at 40. At 35, they get more than 50% wrong. 40 is my SRT. After I do the SRT, I know that my MCL is going to be 20 to 40 decibels better than my SRT, so let's just go up to 20, which will bring me to 60. I'm then going to ask the patient, what if I was the television? What if you're watching your favorite show? Would you turn me up? Would you turn me down? Or is this where it's comfortable for you? Once the patient starts to converse with me, I can go up 5, down 10 to find their MCL. And then from there, I can go ahead and let them know that um, I'm going to be finding an uncomfortable listening level um, and that again this is to make sure that the hearing aid never amplifies anything that would be uncomfortable for you and I would just add five decibels to my MCL until I find that spot. You can also instead of just doing UCL by speech you can do UCL discretes by doing UCLs on every pure tone or every frequency utilizing pure tones and this will give you a uh, a better first fit uh, information to put into NOAA. Now that I've done my SRT, MCL, and UCL, I'm going to start to do my word recognition score. I like to let the patient know that here we're going to check some word comprehension and that this is very important. We notice that if some patients wait too long um, that sometimes we can see some memory loss uh, take place with untreated hearing loss. But here we're going to make sure that if we can make the words loud and clear that the patient can hear it. Um, this will also give us uh, a score that will also let us know how realistic do we need to be with the patient about what type of success that we will get with a hearing aid. I'm utilizing the new six uh, which is the list that I will utilize. I'm going to do one ear at a time. If I'm going to be doing the right ear, I'm going to be utilizing my MCL. And then from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the test and score accordingly. Afterwards, I will use my MCL of my left ear. And then I will do both ears to get my binaural to make sure that we do not have binaural degradation. Um, after that, I have done my air, bone, and speech scores and you have completed your audiogram.